to the show with everything you could ever want to make and do right, right at your fingertips. fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And here's what's coming up on today's show. Find out how a plain old baseball cap and a pile of magazines can be turned into a completely original piece of headgear. Will Fern beat the clock using just a sheet of foam and elastic bands in today's one minute make? And we'll show you how to fool your mates with the help of a fun fingertips head turn box. And for all the details on today's makes, you can look on our website, address at the end of the show, or grab a pen and paper and jot it down straight away. Oh, yeah, I feel like a tropical rhythm always gets me in the mood for cooking. Oh, it's there. Yes, this is Food Fingertips. You know the part of the programme where we show you something that's fun to make and great to taste. I tell you what, I'll do the fun to make, you do the great to taste. Deal? Deal. These are fingertips calypso kebabs. Tropically decorated sticks threaded with fruit and marshmallows and served with a blob of ice cream and a drizzle of chocolate sauce. Now, they're really easy to make and because they're made of fruit, they're really good for you. Apart from the marshmallows. And the chocolate. And the ice cream, that is. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to take this for research, yeah. OK, well, I'd better get making some tropical sticks then. And don't they look fantastic? Now, if you want to have a go at making these, you need to get your fingertips on some oven-baked modelling clay. Now, this comes in lots of different colours and is really easy to mould into any shape. And the fantastic thing is, once you've baked them, they're nice and hard. Look at that. Now, these shapes are surprisingly easy to make. If you just make a little sausage shape and give it a slight bend, look, you've got a nice little banana there. For some grapes, just get lots of little balls of modelling clay and stick them together and then pop a little stalk and perhaps a leaf on top too, because the detail really is the clever bit. You can even add little modelling clay pips to your melon and to your strawberry as well. And, of course, an apple isn't complete without a stalk and a little leaf. Now you want to stick them onto your wooden skewers. So get some of these wooden skewers, and I think they look more fun if you put them on at an angle. So push the pointy end part way through your fruit shape, like that, then pull it back out, and then push in the blunt end. And now they're ready to bake. And here's a fingertips top tip. Get a chunk of stale bread and pop them in so they're upright. And that makes it easier to bake. And do follow the instructions on the packet. Now, for the edible part of your kebab, get some exotic fruit. Use whatever you fancy. Uh, don't use banana, though, because that goes brown too quickly. And then try alternating the fruit with marshmallows. And to make them look more tropical, we've coated them in coconut and chocolate. This is my favourite bit. Here we go. You get your marshmallow and lightly dip it in the chocolate and then you roll it in the coconut and you can sprinkle some on the top as well there we go and there you have one frosted marshmallow delicious and now we need the sticks come on fern got them right here and here's a fingertips top tip don't cook with these because they'll either soften or burn if they get too hot okay let's put that in place and let's get to it Simply put together your kebab as you want. Make as many as you like and then store them upright in a melon or pineapple like we've done there. And then to serve, give each of your mates a kebab with a dollop of ice cream and then get some of that chocolate sauce left over from the marshmallows and just drizzle it oh. all over your ice cream. Oh, oh look good. at that. <laughs> oh. Totally tropical. Deeply delicious. Calypso kebabs. This is Little Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you how to recycle stuff you can most probably find around your home. And today, we're going to show you how you can turn this plain baseball cap into... ..this... ..and this... ..and this! Looks great, doesn't it? And the smartest thing of all is the cap always stays the same. It's the design that's interchangeable, which means you can make one for any occasion. Maybe you go into a football match or a concert. Or you just want to make one that will go with your outfit. 
So, a baseball cap, and then get loads of magazines, and you want to cut out pictures and letters and logos that you like the look of, or maybe just design your own one. It's up to you. Now, we're going to make a fingertips cap, so we've cut out loads of letters, and you want to make them nice and stiff, and to do that, just back them with card, like we've done here. And if you want to give them a nice shiny finish, you could coat them in some clear nail varnish. Now, once you've cut out all the letters that you need, you also need uh, some hook and loop fastener. Now, I'm going to do two lines of writing, like we've done on this cap here. So, you need double the width of the front of your cap of hook and loop fastener. And when you've got that, just cut it in half and stick on both the same part of the hook and loop fastener, one there and one just there. And this can be the hook or the loop, it's entirely up to you. So that's in place, now you need to put the other part of the hook and loop fastener on the back of your letters. Now this bit can be a bit tricky, uh, so take your time with it, but once you've done all the letters, it's going to look so fantastic. So let's just stick this one on, what letter should we have? Let's have the F, so just stick it on the back and then stick it onto the cap and do the same for the rest of the letters. And you can move them around as you like. So, whether it's letters or pictures, look cool in any situation with a fingertips interchangeable baseball cap. Got a minute? Yes, this is the part of the programme where we show you how to make something that could be made in under a minute using bits and pieces you can find around your house. Today, it's my turn to make. And my turn to time. And that's all it takes, nothing more. That's not a lot of stuff. You're feeling very confident about this, aren't you? I might be. Yes, all right. Well, listen, we're not going to tell you what it is. Try and guess as we make it. And are you ready? Yes, I've got a clue for you. Go on. Keep this one undercover, huh? <laughs> yeah. OK. <sighs> okay. Three, two, one, go. OK, let's just take these bits off here. Fold this fun foam in half, like that, any size. And Ten seconds have gone already. A little snip here, a little snip in there. Then go down to this end. A little snip there. What could you be making? A little snip there. And then open up, get some little elastic bands. OK, coming up to 20 seconds have gone. One there. You do tend to shout, don't you, on these Minute Makes, right in my ears. What do you mean? Like that. OK, come on to 30 seconds now. 30 seconds. Stop! There. That was 32 seconds. Not bad, eh? No, not Bit bad at all. Shall I give them a clue as to what I it is? I think you should. OK, here we go. This could be used to cover up boring books. Uh, that's my diary and it's not boring, thank you. Now, all you need to do is just put the corners in place underneath the elastic bands. On this side too, they just slip nicely in, like that. And if I fold it in half, You'll see it in action because this is the Fun Fingertips Phylophone Book Cover. It is so good, isn't it? And it's so easy to make. You must give this one a go. But the good thing is, you don't just have to use it to cover up diaries because we don't all have diaries, do we? No, I don't. <laughs> uh, you could use it to cover up your textbook, like this camouflage version here. And you can give them any design you like. Check out this nice flower design there. And you haven't even got to make them out of foam. This one's just made of card and it works in exactly the same way. And because of their clever design, you can even use them to hold loose scraps of paper so you've got an instant scrapbook or sketch pad. So why don't you have a fiddle and see if you can make a funky fingertips phylophone book cover in under a minute. It takes longer to say it than to make it. <laughs> this is Fun Fingertips, the part of the programme. Oh! Oh! Ah! Well, we show you stuff that's fun to make and fun to do. That wasn't so bad, was it? Do you know, I've never felt better. This is a great trick. Now, obviously, I didn't really have my head twisted all the way round. Here's what happened. When I turned the window out of view, Stephen turned his head this way. Then, as I continued to turn the box round, Stephen turned his head back this way, and as the window comes back into view, so does Stephen's head. Making oh. it look... Well, thank you. Making it look as though my head had been twisted round. Mm, you can take it off now, Stevie. Oh. Oh, thank you very much. Now, if you would like to make your own head turn box, here's how to do it. First of all, get your fingertips on a small box that just fits on your head, and then cut out a window that your face just fits through like that. And then you need to find a big box that the small box can actually turn around in, like this one here. And then once you've found that big box, cut out another window 
just there, similar to the window that's in your box, similar size, and then just test them. Yes! I think that works fine. What do you think? Looking good, Stevie. Thank you. Now, the smaller box is held by a tube which sits inside another tube which is stuck to the top of the bigger box. Now, for the handle. For this, you need to get yourself a cling film tube and strengthen it by wrapping masking tape around it, like we've done here. And then just flatten out one end. Flatten it out like that. And then get another cling film tube and you just want to measure the width of the flatten out end and just make a mark there and there. And this has to be in the centre of this tube. And then start a hole with your sharp pencil at one end and then just insert a pair of scissors and cut a slit all the way along. So you'll now have a tube like this. And you want to cut another slit on the opposite side the exact same size. And now you can insert the flattened part of the other tube into this to give it a good push and it will go through. And there, you have your handle. There you go, Fern. Cheers, Stevie. Now, to make your handle swivel, just like this, you need to make this outer tube. Now, this is just made from a toilet roll. You just want to slice from the top right the way down to the bottom, and then put your handle inside this outer tube and wrap it around so it grips quite tightly. Not too tightly so it can't swivel. That's about perfect. And then... Get some masking tape and tape that in place. And now you need to connect the toilet roll to the top of your box. And to do this, just cut halfway up the toilet roll all the way round so you'll have something that looks like that. And then you need to find the centre of the top of your box. And the easiest way to do that is just draw a big cross and where they meet in the middle, that's the centre. Then cut out a hole that's just about the same size as your toilet roll. And you now need to draw around the top of the box on a large piece of card and cut that out. So you'll have a piece of card like this and do the same thing as you did on the top of the box. Find the centre and cut an identical hole. Because now you can join the whole thing together. Just flatten out the flaps on the toilet roll like this and with lots of glue, stick them down, but obviously make sure that the toilet roll is lined up with the hole, like that. And then, with loads more glue, secure your extra bit of card on top, and that will neaten the whole thing off, and it will keep the handle nice and secure. And now you want to stick your handle onto the top of your smaller box. So like you did before, cut out a piece of card, but this time it needs to be the same size as the top of your smaller box. Again, find the centre and make a little hole just there. Then take your handle and poke it through the outer tube which is attached to your bigger box and leave a bit of a gap just at the top. Now, turn the box over and make a little mark just where the top of the box is, about there and cut five or six slits up to this point so your handle will look like that. Now push this through that piece of cardboard with the hole in, fan out all these separate bits and stick it in place. And once all the glue has dried, you can decorate your head turn box and as you can see, we've gone for a very cool metallic look. If you go to the Fingertips website, as always, address at the end of today's show, you can find out all of the information of how to make your own head turn box. And now it's time to put it all together. So, put your smaller box inside your bigger box and push one of the tubes inside the other. That's it. And then you can put your handle in place. And now you can test it. Right, sit yourself down. Okay. Tell you what, I've been looking forward to this bit. <laughs> Pop that on top. Right, now all I do is go three. Two, one, and we twist, and we go, and we go. Oh, that works really well, doesn't it, Stevie? Certainly does. But once you've done a bit of training, you don't even need the box. Oh, makes you feel a bit dizzy, though. Well, that's it for today's show. If you want to make anything from today's programme, then why don't you check out the Fingertips website? The address is on the screen now. And we'll see you soon for some more... Fingertips! Fingertips. Bye! Bye.